Welcome to Programming in Modern uh, C++. Uh, I am going to discuss uh, a uh, new aspect in terms of C and C++, the sister languages in a two part uh, tutorial. Uh, this is tutorial 11, which will be the first part of it. So, we will discuss particularly as to what is, how far C and C++ are actually compatible. And uh, we will show you some of the significant features which actually differ between them. So, we often say that C is a subset of C++, right? it is a, it's a loose statement and it is far from truth. There are various intra dialect incompatibilities that is different versions of uh, C or different versions of C++ have incompatibilities. Not only that a version may have a new feature, even the earlier feature may behave differently. And certainly, there are uh, inter dialect incompatibilities across the languages. So, you have some version of C and some version of C++. You are trying to you know mix them, uh, build them together and so on. You may be in for certain surprise. So, uh, we take a look at uh, uh, C, C++ communities because you know the communities are not necessarily independent. There is a common community and, and there is a need to understand how much they are compatible, which part is compatible and which part is not. So, that you cannot, you do not get into lot of uh, you know surprises. Since there could be you know several uh, uh, variations of compatibility discussion, here uh, I will uh, focus on the two most popular dialects that is C 99 for C and C plus plus 11 for C plus plus and uh, for uh, you know in cases of certain cases of incompatibility, we will also discuss about uh, the workarounds. Right? So, that is what we want to achieve in this uh, tutorial and the, and the next. So, this is the key parts. So, first uh, let us uh, ask as to why is compatibility important. Right? Now, C and C++ as languages are closely related. I mean to the extent that we often call them as C, C, C++, right? there is no language as C, C++, it is either C or it is C++, but there are many significant differences. So, though there is no language as C, C++, but there is C, C++ community, the community of developers, thousands of them, probably lakhs of them who program in C as well as C++ in different extent. So, we can broadly categorize them into three groups. So, as you mature, you will also fall into one of these groups. One is uh, programmers who use C only. There is a large group of programmers who use only C, primarily the embedded systems uh, community. And uh, they would probably never call a C++ library. But uh, it is uh, difficult to survive that way because as C++ has a lot of wealth of code, there is certain wealth of code in C, uh, I mean C has a lot of wealth of code. Similarly, C++ has also built a lot of valuable code which may benefit a C programmer. But they are, they are predominantly C minded programmers and want to focus on that. The programmers who use C++ only. Uh, several of them different uh, systems programmer or compl complex system developers and so on. Naturally, they cannot uh, think that they will not know or master C because uh, you know because of all the overlap and you know common C features being available in C++ and so on. So, they have to be very careful as to uh, the part of C in C++ does it behave the C way or behaves the C++ way and so on. And certainly there is a big third uh, community which who use C and C++ both seamlessly. Right? So, compatibility will maximize the community of 
builders. If we can more and more we can make codes compatible, then we will have more users for that, we will have more market uh, for the libraries, we will have better set of tools, more set of collaborators and so on. So, for these reasons it is, it is very important to have compatible. So, it has always been a vision that uh, C++ should be as compatible to C as possible. Um, uh, ja Professor Janis Straustrup, uh, the creator suggests that the incompatibilities between C and C++ should be reduced as much as possible in order to maximize interoperability between the two languages, but still there is there are differences. Of course, there is a counter you know uh, view to this uh, who think that they are different languages and compatibility between them is useful, but not vital because each of these language has its own uh, philosophy and uh, the more you make them compatible forcefully, then uh, their philosophy gets uh, compromised and so on. So, there have been different uh, such uh, views and uh, also the support of uh, different dialects of C in the corresponding dialect of C++ has not been uniform. Right? So, it is, it is important to understand what these are. So, just to you know uh, give you an idea, there is a Venn diagram of features as if. So, C90, C89 that is the oldest standard as, as you have known, C99 is the most commonly used standard and C++ let us uh, uh, take it as C++ 98, C++ 03. If you take these three dialects and draw this Venn diagram, you get 7, uh, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 different and interestingly there is some feature which fall in this category. That is uh, there are uh, there are features which are between say these and ha have compatibility issues. Right? So, let us uh, look at uh, these issues, uh, some of these issues one by one, uh, because C++ is not a subset of, uh, C is not a subset of uh, C++. So, the way we will uh, illustrate this uh, is, uh, we will normally try to write the same code in C file as well as C++ file. So, main dot C and main dot CPP and see what their behavior is. We will use the same GCC compiler and uh, we will use uh, minus uh, std flag if we want a particular dialect and see the difference in the compilation time behavior, in the runtime behavior and so on to understand uh, the uh, obviously, you can you can read up the standard, the book and all that and know the d differences and so on, but I prefer to do it in this uh, hands on way because then we do not need to remember. You, you just know that this is uh, well this way I, ca I can write the code compile and get to see how it is behaving. This finally is engineering. So, the more you can you can do or learn by actually you know building and executing code is what makes things easier, because you do not have to remember hordes of rules written in the books and the blogs and so on. So, the basic uh, issue between C and C++ is C is weakly typed, C is not very strong, C has type, but it is not very strong about that. And one major thing happens with void star. For example, in C, any pointer which is void star can be seamlessly cast, implicitly cast to any other pointer type. This is valid in C. So, this was a void star pointer and you have used that to initialize a int star pointer. So, after you do this, it becomes an int star pointer, but this is, this is just allowed. Similarly, for malloc you can do this, but these things are not allowed in C++ unless you do an explicit cast, void star will not be allowed to be implicitly converted to any other pointer type in C++, you need to explicitly write this. Okay. So, this is this is the first uh, in, and, and very commonly used uh, feature everywhere that, uh, that we use in different uh, 
in malloc in the context of uh, say post six thread library in different frameworks of callback and so on like um, so we will this is what uh, one second is the use of const c++ is lot more strict in its use of const right so mm, uh, suppose you have a pointer to a const data and you use that pointer to initialize a non const pointer to a non const data now this as we have learned is dangerous because with this i can actually violate the original rule because i can do star q and change that data which will actually change the value that p is pointing to but c does allow you to silently discard the const qualifier which c++ will not allow you to do so if you write this code and uh, you compile uh, this with uh, c and c++ both you'll see that uh, c part will just uh, go with uh, you know giving a warning that you are discarding the const but it will compile c++ will give you an error because this is not valid in c++ c++ is more strict in terms of that type another in uh, terms of const we learned that const variable will always have to be initialized rule number 1 we learned from the very beginning but not in c in c you can write a const like this where it does not have an initialization obviously if you compile it in c++ it's an error because uninitialized constants are not allowed so you can see that uh, the first thing that we have to keep in mind is c++ is uh, quite strict about types and every time very few things will be done implicitly and that too is done implicitly because it has to support certain big chunks of code from c without uh, much changes but c will c++ will always tell you that if you are changing a type please be explicit use a cast and do that do not do it silently okay now let's say the compatibility of uh, string dot h and enum string dot h is a header you know so this is uh, the string dot h in c standard library if you open the corresponding you know we said that the corresponding uh, standard library component for string dot h is strip dot h put a c in the beginning c string but if you actually open the c string header file you'll find that it it has an extra function for i mean almost all string function it has there are two so here if you see the difference is in in c this returns a pointer to character yeah. and takes a pointer to constant character right in c++ there are two one it it takes pointer to constant character and returns the same type here it takes a pointer to character and returns the same type right so when you actually call it from the c perspective this function will get called right because whether the pointer is const or non const it can always be uh, treated as a pointer to a constant data but the fact that you have this tells you that uh, c++ does provide a overloading in terms of even basic standard library functions that exist in the in the string dot h and c++ does that to make sure that its whole you know logical paradigm of constness and you know development and protection of data can be propagated all across so in c++ um the call to str chr will bind to a different function than what it will bind in c right so there's a significant difference in that and, and this is just kind of an example uh, similar differences exist at other places in the standard library as well very interesting is the case of enum suppose you have an enum right and uh, in c we say that enum is nothing but a sub type of int so you can uh, 
tree take an int and uh, implicitly convert it to enum right so i can i can uh, i can say that d is a variable of type enum weak so which means it has these seven possible values that it can take then i define an integer which is 2 and i make this assignment so this side is an integer and this side is an enum now this c allows this implicit conversion c++ gives you an error the reason c++ gives you an error is uh, enum is not a subtype of int in c++ enum is a different type in c++ so it cannot just as a subtype here you can seamlessly convert implicitly but being a different type it needs explicit conversion also the enum constants like uh, all these different uh, seven constants here these constants are of type int in c whereas uh, they are distinct types in c++ and may have a different size from int for example if there are 7 it could be they are represented as 3 bits which gives you 8 options not a whole of a 32 bit or 64 bit integer right so because of this differences enum will also have to be carefully uh, treated between c and c++ these are very common things then uh, c++ has one definition rule that you can have only one definition of a variable you cannot have multiple so in c you can write say a static variable in 10 and then later you can write in n initialize 10 in c it is fine but in c++ this is an error when it encounters the second one it says it's a redefinition n is previously declared already in in here one definition rule excludes that one definition rule excludes uh, the redefinition of the of new type by the same name for example in in c you can define a enum bool say my enum bool is false true and you can take make a structure say underscore bool having a data member b and give it a type def it to bool in c this is permitted so but you are actually reusing the name the same name in c++ this will not be permitted in c++ it will say conflicting declaration here previous declaration was enum here so this just I, I took just two different types of examples but uh, it all comes under the odr or one definition rule of c++ that in c++ you can have only one definition of a of a variable or a or a type and trying to redefine is always an error in c it is not always so now how do you treat void as a parameter suppose in uh, c you provide a function prototype as int foo no parameter now this implies that parameters are unspecified whereas when you write it in parameters are unspecified when you treat the same signature in c++ it means that it takes no arguments so in c if you have declared something as int foo without parameter as in here you can call it as foo 0 because you said it is unspecified so you can call it with any number of parameter in c++ what you meant that it takes no parameter so this calling it as foo 0 is actually a violation of the signature that you have right? so that is uh, that is a you know subtle difference so in c if you want uh, to declare a function which is kind of equivalent to c++ no argument you have to use the argument void so it it says 
the same thing in a little roundabout way all that it says is that it takes a parameter of type void which means that it takes a no parameter but it is specified it takes a no parameter you say it, it saying it in this way this is a void type now you cannot call uh, now if you call foo zero this is an error in c as well right so this is you, you can see that when you when you get into mixing porting and all that these kind of things will uh, cause pain of con compatibility because if you have these two declarations and you have a main which calls both of these functions uh, with uh, zero uh, a, a parameter zero then uh, obviously foo zero is uh, in in terms of c it is fine because it's unspecified uh, bar zero is not because it's specified that you will not have a parameter and so this is in c plus plus foo zero is not possible because you have zero number of parameters specified similarly bar zero is also not uh, uh, possible because you have said it is void which also means no parameter right so this is the so the you, you can see that uh, the same code you compile with two different uh, compiler you will have different compile time behavior and these are the typical compatibility issues you will you will face uh, nested structure you will understand from your uh, discussions on the namespace that uh, i can have a structure outer and inside that i have a structure inner in outer i can refer to in c and c++ in the same way i can in c i can refer to inner directly because every name in c is global right so if not defined c++ the repeated c inner is but in c++ i cannot refer to inner directly because the every struct is a namespace. So, the actual name of this inner is not inner, it is outer colon colon inner. So, you can see the difference between C and C plus plus in case of nested structure, it looks something, I mean there is no C plus plus feature apparently here, but the interpretations are very different and therefore, you will have incompatibility between them. Uh, variable length array is a well talked of uh, feature in uh, C, where you can pass a uh, array without any, without a fixed size and you can deal with uh, that. So, this is, this is the way you can say I have a variable length array, you can also say this. Now, here in this function set and add, I have declared this where n is a parameter this is a variable length array which is available in c and so i can from the main i can do set and add for n that keeps an appropriate size of the vals array as an automatic variable during the uh, you know set add function call and uh, from uh, from that I use the function add which takes this uh, array and does the addition. So, this is uh, a feature which is available in C, uh, in C++ standard till C++ 11 there is no concept of a variable length array. In up to C++ 11 array size is a constant expression. C++ 14 is introducing this as a simple expression, not a constant expression. We will learn more about that uh, in that part, but what I wanted to highlight is if you are using any kind of uh, um, any kind of VLA in C that will not be compatible with the C++. Flexible array member is an extension of that uh, where uh, C allows that the last member of a struct could be an array without specified dimension. So, it could be of any size. So, this is called uh, a flexible array member, which uh, becomes easy uh, for use because you can 
uh, you can get to know the actual you know data requirement at the runtime and accordingly it will take care of the number of data you want to put in of the appropriate type but uh, again this is a c only feature uh, iso c++ has no such feature as fam right so c++ does not even recognize this as a as a feature you will have a severe incompatibility for this uh, restrict uh, is was provided in uh, c++ to min uniqueness of pointers so you say that uh, a pointer is restrict which means you are trying to say that uh, it points to an object which is not pointed to by anyone else if i say int star restrict c then i'm saying that c is uh, a pointed to an object which is not pointed to by anyone else so if it is not pointed to by anyone else naturally things become much easier for the compiler because it does not have to look at the possibility of that value getting changed by someone else and so on so restrict uh, was uh, provided uh, in uh, c99 uh, but somehow this has been a very well debated uh, feature and uh, so far iso c++ does not support this restrict uh, feature rather you can get the similar effect by unique ptr and those kind of uh, stuff that you get uh, through functors uh, you know your um, sorry uh, smart uh, pointers and so on but uh, this language built in feature of uh, restrict is not available in c++ so to summarize uh, this is not exhaustive but uh, in this part of the tutorial i have tried to take you through uh, the fact that though c and c++ uh, are very closely related there are some um, you know marginal to medium to severe incompatibility across dialects of c and c++ which need to be um, clearly understood or at least studied when you want to do a mix of uh, programs between c and c++ or you are trying to migrate a c, c program into c++ and so on right so the major features we have discussed uh, in the second part of this tutorial in tutorial 12 i'll present these and a number of uh, you know minor features also in terms of a comparison table which you can be i mean it's a it's a couple of pages of uh, slides of comparison table which you can keep handy in case you are into uh, mixed language project or migration project which is very very common in the industry to have thank you very much uh, try this out and see the difficulties for yourself and see you in the second part of this tutorial